morning, everyone. This is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing here on Conscious Business Zone with my friend, Joanne Palladino. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Kathy. Yes. So Joanne and I have been friends for 10 years or more. Uh, I, I have a feeling it might be ish, 10 years ish. <laughs> well, I met your husband like 15 years before. Or yeah. A, a, bit, that. a bit more ago, yes. <laughs> yes. So, and we're both in the same region, and we both love a lot of the same activities. So, so we're kind of pals, and we're hoping to see what wants to come through Joanne today, because Joanne is a channel of a group of beings called Shamaya, the beings of light, and uh, they are so full of grace and love that it is palpable. And I'm hoping that maybe they want to show up, but if even if they don't, Joanne has a nurturing and loving way of helping people in, through this powerful transformational time. She has a way of holding space, whether Shemaya is there or not, the wisdom of what comes through her is quite, um, it's, it's a state change that allows mm. you to not suffer anymore. Mm. Right? Well, you know, Shemaya is already here. Yay. So the, the energetic is present. And when, Shamaya came through as you were sharing that lovely introduction. Thank you. Um, I felt this beautiful, like settling in sort of this grounding aspect, which, you know, how important um, that is for this time. You know, Kathy and I had a nice conversation before we went live today and, you know, the energy that is so kicked up in this fear um, and how we get caught up in it. So today we will see, um, you know, how this unfolds and really touching on um, the level of importance to no longer be distracted, if you will, um, or identified with the fear that is being fed to humanity um, in all ways. I mean, just turn on the mainstream media. And if you want to kick up your fear, <laughs> that's the station you need to turn into and tune into. Um, so, you know, what showed up for me when I knew I was going to be part of Kathy's uh, show today was to see beyond what you see, you know, and what, what does that, what does that mean? Um, and when I was with that, if we look at just the three dimensional aspect of our lives, we're only taking um, in what we're seeing at a very surface level. And I'll take the example of, you know, the level of suffering that is going on and acting out, um, you know, again, just turning on the TV, if you actually still watch TV and the, and the mainstream media, that it permeates everything. So this practice, I guess I could call it, that I've incorporated in my life and have, you um, you know, introduced to clients through the years, it's called the sacred pause, you know, because when you're in that fear, like you're, it's, it's like you're swimming or trying to swim and staying afloat and not drowning in this wave of dense energy. It's dense consciousness. It's really asleep, if you will. But the sacred pause allows you to come out of that wave that is taking you over and you get into the 
dense muck that um, in a way is keeping you prisoner, you know? So I will get into that a bit, but Shamaya does want to share. And before I, I do that, because um, everyone or some of you <laughs> might be asking, you know, Shamaya, what, what's that? What, you know, what does that mean? And that is a word that came through when I started spontaneously speaking the language of light. And every now and then the word Shamaya came out. And again, I was I didn't know what that was, but to find out that it's an ancient Aramaic word, Shemaya. And actually it's the, it's part of the very first line in the Aramaic prayer. And it's a wound Bushmaya. Just being with that word, a wound Bushmaya. The a womb, it is, before the manifestation, it is divinity, it is God, it's source energy. The, the, the Bushmaya, the, the Maya part is that God light vibration. And the Maya is when it comes into manifestation that it permeates all things. So in essence, we are all Shemaya. We are birthing that essence in this form. So how exciting is that? We are the manifestation of divine consciousness. Again, the words, you could put any kind of word to it of the, the mystery of the creator of all things, the universe, and us walking on this lovely speck of a planet called planet Earth. So abum de bushmaya. So a transmission to ground <laughs> our time together. And this transmission will touch on and really permeate the heart center because we always hear, you know, it begins, it begins with ourselves. It begins with our self-love. And really that's the baseline or the intention when I work with, you know, precious souls is to help them, guide them to a place of unconditional love complete and unconditional love and self-acceptance. And imagine if we were actually in that space. Imagine, as John Lennon would say, <laughs> sing. So that's what this transmission is, is to support the quieting of the chatter that is in the egoic, three-dimensional mind full of chatter, the what ifs and what it could be and I should have and I need to, which keeps you quite dizzy and off center and not present. That is a transmission for you to get a deeper understanding of the dis-ease, if you will, if that is really where you live all the time. And not to say there isn't love in your life, that's not what I'm saying, or you're in love <laughs> with someone. I mean, I, I don't have children, but you know, your children, but the importance, the beauty of resting from that. And I see it energetically because I see here and feel energetically. It's like this tornado <laughs> you know, just keeps going and you're in it. 
it's like, oh my goodness, I feel dizzy. Yeah, I could understand. Or I'm confused or I'm lightheaded or I'm depressed. So it's taking a respite <laughs> from that spin. And bringing the energetic <clears throat> attention from what you're saying and creating stories and feeding the fear that's being fed to humanity, dropping into the sacred heart. So we can talk about the physical aspect of the heart, but this is more of the energetic, the compassionate wisdom that resides in you. And when you receive this, you may want to, you know, close the eyes. And it's not about understanding <laughs> of what's being said through the language of light, which is actually our original language. But it's more about feeling the quality, the essence, the vibration that Shemaya is transmitting to those who are watching now or will watch this later. And this is also, I'm hearing, to send it out to humanity. So let us begin. Because that is the only place where we're living is now in the beginning and now in the beginning. Kosomala itono shibiana. Abumd bushmaya. Allowing yourself to embody the preciousness of grace that we are truly surrounded in. <clears throat> and as this is coming through, a plethora of angels are joining us. You may feel the expansiveness of what is coming through. Malata. So breathing this in, this is actually going into and being extended to you with really, there's like an elegance to it is what I'm feeling. It's sort of like this, this soothing breeze. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, but I, that's what I'm noticing. It's like a soothing breeze that is permeating the cells through the heart portal, the sacred heart. And being with this in a way that it's not flat, that it's not just entering your body from the front, but you're receiving it surround sound, if you will. The front, behind the sides that you're blanketed in. This whole time together could be Shemaya and not speaking a word <laughs> that we understand, but more of a frequency that collectively our soul knows intimately. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so just being with that. So I'm going to just shift a bit, and my sense is Shemaya will be visiting again. <clears throat> And excuse me, because I have the raspy voice this morning. I'll raise my, you know, my water glass to that. Oh, that felt so good. Uh, I, I, I know that this healing, that this gift that you just gave us, 
is very deep and it might take more than one listening to get into the present moment because that's where that can be delivered. So it's, it's not a, you know, when you're on social media or you're on YouTube, sometimes there's all this distraction, but, but if you can get into the present now, the present moment, and then listen, when you get to listen to this again, um, to Shamaya, I think you're going to find this um, incredible connection to all that is. Yeah. Well, that is so true, what you're sharing, Kathy. And as you were saying that, I'm seeing like people allowing themselves to energetically unplug. Do you remember those old you know, telephone boards where, you know, hello, you know, yeah, one ringy dingy really and two it. ringy dingy, you know, <laughs> you got to put humor into all of this, <clears throat> but it's really unplugging yourself from what is feeding and depleting your adrenals. The adrenal glands are just getting fried with the fear and the need or have to know it all and get it all. And, you know, what am I missing and who do I need to connect with and all of that. So I feel this is where the sacred pause is perfect mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead. You have a question. Well, or well, the other thing I wanted everyone to know is that this, um, Opportunity is the opportunity to go from your head to your heart. Um, that That is what this time period, I believe, is about. And the opportunity to not necessarily negate this. We want to be able to navigate this world, but to use this as your um, compass. And yeah. um, what when you get into that now moment, and you feel the grace of um, your connection again. Yeah. Um, it it then this can can tell you take a left, take a right, and and it's so much more fulfilling. So that that's why I was so excited when you said yes that we could um, give this gift to the listeners because this is um, the we're not going to see this energy if you're sensitive. We're not going to see it ever really reduce anymore. This is uh, an up yes. <laughs> climb. Check. You can and count on it. Check. <laughs> so if you were just going, okay, I can just do it for another three days and then I'm okay. It's like, mm -mm. No. Just, just plan on no. everything that does not serve you is showing up for you to decide what <clears throat> baggage or suitcases or carry-ons you'd like to take on your journey forward. And this is an opportunity, Shamaya's energy and Joanne's um, genius in how she helps you navigate this is, is a huge gift for anyone who's ready to do the work. It's, it's um, suffering is optional. Mm -hmm the Buddhist teaching, mm -hmm. you know, it, the word that's coming up <clears throat> as you're sharing, Kathy, is devotion to oneself, yes. you know, and you, we could also use the word commitment, you know, or dedication, but there's something for me anyway, the word devotion has this, this quality of grace. It really elevates the, the value that you give yourself. Right. Well, we were taught in the old paradigm, in the paradigm growing up, that that was selfish. And, and that isn't the truth, that you can't give from an empty well. You, you need to work on yourself first and then give. Um, Bonnie Bird put, um, yes, so peaceful. So, so she she was able to feel it. 
Um, Beautiful, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. I felt it too. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming well, through me. I'm getting like lots of chills and everything. Yeah, it's really palpable. Um, and I know the digital devices do allow for this frequency to be transmitted yeah. beautifully. Yeah. The yeah. reason I know that is I helped Joanne, and we did the videos for her website. And by the end, <laughs> by the end of it that I was looped. I mean, the energy that was coming through for us and yeah. it was captured on the videos. I mean, they got progressively a little bit um, less focused. <laughs> I had to work on that afterwards, but, but it, it's, this energy is very, um, very, uh, it's, it's almost like it's so close to your remembering who you are that, yeah. that you don't it seems subtle but it's not right yeah i you know it's there there's something here that i'm feeling i want to share okay Great. and i and and i and i feel it describes the light language Shemaya coming through and, and there's many people who speak light language and it's, it's very different. Um, this I feel is, is really specific. I mean, the, what came, what, you know, years ago, it was like, it's, it's here to support the awakening on the planet. And it's, it's, it's interesting. What, what I'm seeing is like, you know, exploding sort of, the, the the essence of the true love so it's it's the language of knowledge but it's not the language of knowledge in our human in our human aspect the native conscious language um inherent within all humanity so it does provide a remembering for us again this came through spontaneously to me but through the years, some people that I've worked with, it sparked a memory. Or when they were children, they spoke it, and you know, and it and it was able to be rebirthed in them again. It's multi-dimensional language, sound, and symbols that are contained within many wave spectrums of the conscious energy that we make up our reality. So the more you're able to be in tune with your own essence of love, the importance of that, the devotion to that, it will really remove the density, the fear that's in you Raise the frequency of your body, where you can fully embody in your light and then extend that out to humanity. So again, I want to weave back the sacred pause and I'm going to give an example because I use it all the time. I use it every day, all the time. An example of, I get triggered by something, someone. I read something and I feel triggered. I feel contracted. A judgment shows up. Hmm, does anybody judge? Do you <laughs> self-criticize? I wonder, you know. With the sacred pause, since I have incorporated it in my life, I catch myself immediately. And what the sacred pause does is it allows me to step away from what is triggering me, what I have judged. And by stepping away from whatever it is, an energetic, we'll call it an energetic, it allows me to view and observe what is disturbing me. And it takes me away from blaming my misery, <laughs> again, to putting some humor, my misery on what triggered me. And it brings me back to myself. 
And it allows me responsibility on how I want to be with the trigger and look at it as a neutral event and view it from that aspect and really choose from a conscious place of what, you know, what is going to serve me? How can I be with this trigger and learn from it, awaken from it, and not allow it to trigger me again? So it allows spaciousness within you and you unplug from the density. And I just wrote some notes here because there's certain things I do want to point out. It, it shifts the vibrational field for you as well, this sacred pause. So when you're in the trigger by a person, something you read, whatever, <clears throat> the judgment, and you stay in that contraction, judgmental, vibrational quality, that's what you're feeding yourself. That's what you're feeding your cells, actually. <laughs> It's like, well, no wonder why I feel dizzy and nauseous and I'm sick. So the sacred pause shifts you out of that density. It brings you back to the moment because when you're out there, you're not present. You're not fully grounded. You're not in your body. Your head has taken over and fear is having a feast day. It's like, oh boy, I can't wait. So it's a conscious choice that you're making. From I'm going to stay in the density. Yeah, because I like it. I'm going to eat the muck and feed it and be miserable and, <laughs> and judge. Versus I'm making a ch conscious choice for my well-being. Stepping out of that energy. Being in the moment and truly serve your selflessness, your trueness. So it's a deliberate decision to interpret. I love this because I, I wrote it down last night. In, uh, interrupt, excuse me, interrupt a habitual pattern that has been causing you misery for a long time. And really keeps you in victim consciousness. Because you're feeding into the fear. You're, you're being your own victim, actually. You're, you're really your, your, your own perpetrator making yourself a victim. So I'm, I'm trusting this is making sense of the what it does, the sacred pause. It's, it's really... Um, it's a mindfulness practice, you know, for you. <laughs> so this I like. I this I wrote this again last night. <clears throat> it's a sense of fasting. So you're fasting from what has been feeding you for a long time. Like, is it really serving you? So fasting from the energetic density that is causing dis-ease within yourself. And if you take a peek, it's causing a lot of dis-ease throughout humanity. So some people are like, all right, what do I do? Where, where do I begin? You begin in the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. You begin in the moment. And allow that sacred pause to just step back and view it as an interesting three-dimensional chessboard. <laughs> and say, what move do I really want to make here? And looking at it as it's all neutral. Because you have a choice of, is this going to be a drama or not? And I'm choosing not to be in drama. It has not served me at all. 
Yes, my dear. I do have a question about this because um, <clears throat> first you see the trigger yeah. and you see your inclination to project it on someone else or something else. And then is it better to sit with it and experience it fully so you're not resisting it anymore? Um, is that because um, it's it's not like we just um, release it without experiencing it, right? Yeah, yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to wipe my nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so the sacred pause is the first step. Okay. Of what you're kind, what you're bringing up, <clears throat> but it's it's a <clears throat> it's a significant step to allow you to do what you are suggesting okay. and asking about. Okay. So let's just take it a little further. So I am in the sacred pause, and I realize I was triggered by politics. <laughs> What a, what a good example. So when I shift myself, get out of that energy, the first thing that I do is I breathe. I take in a mindful breath that is deep and slow. <sighs> and I just release. Now, do I do this every single time? No, I've been doing it for so long. I have my different ways of doing it. But this is a, a starting point for those of you that are receiving this. Whew. What that allows you to do is to tap into yourself where there isn't a distraction from outside. And notice what you are feeling in your body. Hmm. You know, I, I, I realized all day today, I have my, my chest is heavy. And I can't breathe. Huh. You may have noticed it, but not paid attention to it. But now the sacred pause with the breath, tapping into the body, noticing how it's feeling, you can then pay attention to it. Okay, so I have this heaviness in my chest. Now what do I do? What do you do after that? Still in the sacred pause, me could do it all kinds of ways. I'm just going to give an example here, but you could place your hand on your heart, on your solar plexus, and breathe into that heaviness. So Kathy, like you mentioned, this isn't resisting the heaviness. This is actually embracing the heaviness, embracing the contraction, the uncomfortableness, and allowing it. And by doing that, it actually softens and releases. allowing yourself to do that a few times. And then you begin to realize that, wow, I, I don't feel that heaviness anymore. I feel lighter. I feel more grounded. The distraction, the trigger is gone. But what also might come up, and again, that's why I shared, Kathy, there's layers to this. It's It, it really is a practice that's full of grace. The sacred pause is full of grace. It's holistic medicine in a way. So what may also show up, and surprise, surprise, is an emotion. Because in the healing process, in the, the elevation of awareness and what we do with that, there's aspects of the body, the emotional, mental, spiritual, um, and, and mental body, all of it. 
So we're caring for all of those aspects. So the emotional body goes, hello, <laughs> in that tightness, hmm, what will show up for you? It could be anger. It could be sadness. It could be loneliness. You know, the roomy poem, the guest house, if you're familiar with that, you know, you wake up in the morning and who's knocking on your door? Loneliness is knocking on your door. Welcome loneliness in. Now, Rumi doesn't say those words, but that's really what he's pointing to. Who's going to visit me today? My loneliness is going to visit to me today. And it feels heavy in my chest. Be with that loneliness as if it was an innocent child just needing to be held. So in holding the tightness, breathing through it, the emotion shows itself. And it's also touching and acknowledging that emotion. There's, there is really, I mean, again, through the years I've worked with this and so many, that there is such a beauty in the emotions and they're kicking up really loud because as Kathy shared um, the stirring <laughs> is going to get more intense and if we have a tool a mindfulness practice a welcoming to devote oneself as a sacred pause the kicking up will not affect you. It won't like blindside you. You'll be able to observe it and recognize it and send it blessings, which is another aspect of the sacred pause. No longer judging in the way of mastery, the practice for forgiveness is all in, it's all in this it's very rich you say to what you judged a person i judge you not and you extend forgiveness for yourself for what you just created in this sacred pause and when you are judging i judge you not government official I forgive myself that I have just created distortion in me and in humanity when you send out a judgment. And then you say to whoever you judged, I embrace you and I love you. And I free you to be yourself and I bless you with the blessings of sacred unity or bless however you want to bless so there is so much richness and depth in this sacred pause that it's layers upon layers upon layers but the beginning is to invite the practice <laughs> throughout your day when as, as soon as you notice the trigger or the contraction, or the judgment, or the self-criticism, because it, you know, it begins here. So I'm trusting that answered your question, Kathy. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But perfect, perfect. So yeah. we want to put on the screen, Joanne, um, uh, Jacqueline, Jackie Arnold put Joanne is the real deal. So, and, and that's the truth of it. <laughs> Jack, Jacqueline, I have to say, I thought of you this morning. Oh, I oh. did. I, I mean, that's kind of interesting. And I actually saw you here. Oh, well, so here, here you are. <laughs> How cool. Yes. So, so Julian, there's so much um, stirring, as I said, that's oh going on. Yeah. And um, just like you, I don't watch television, but I am on YouTube and I am on social media. 
So I'm watching as um, so many um, things are coming up that we need to make decisions on. And um, just like with that pause, is would you use that um, that pause as a way to make decisions? Because I mean, I yeah. even I'm at the grocery store and I'm using kinesiology over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so it's I, like I, I, I all have, different ways of doing it, you know. <laughs> well, I have tools, so yeah. So yeah. I, I, and I trust that I get grounded and do that. And um, but uh, so many people don't have tools. And there's so many, it seems like um, it, there's, maybe it's because we're all on the internet and there's so much going on in the world and we're being exposed to all of those different kinds of choices than we had 30 years ago. I mean, um, I, I don't know if that's the case, but how, how do you see um, better decision making during this time? Yeah. Yeah. Um so yet another layer in the sacred pause. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, you're, you're hitting them all Kathy and we didn't uh -uh. even plan this. Uh -uh. So, yeah, I mean, I thought it, I, I, you know, being with you today, I was like, what, what do I really want to communicate is just introducing the sacred pause and the beauty is we're, we're getting into the layers of the gifts that it could bring you. So when you're in the sacred pause and really it, it allows you to touch within yourself of what is going on, what the body is feeling, um, the emotions that are, you know, present um, there, uh, realizing how the mind is, you know, going. But as you practice this, what happens is a clarity starts, you know, begins to, to take hold. And self-inquiry is part of the sacred pause as well. So using, again, an example, I am triggered. And, you, and, and another beautiful teaching that fits into this beautifully from the way of mastery, nothing I experienced is caused by anything outside of me. Hmm. It's that person because they're that way. Oh, really, Joanne? Nothing I experienced is caused by anything outside of me. So that brings me to self-inquiry of when was I that way? <laughs> you know, in my life. So getting to your point a little more, Kathy, is like choosing, because again, there's so many choices. I mean, I feel like over the past three years and the, you know, pandemic allowed us to settle in and the choices that's available to us have just exploded you know, where do I go? What do I do? Who do I listen to? Should I do this? Should I do that? The sacred pause allows you to tap into your truth. I use my body as a communication device. <clears throat> if someone says, Joanne, do you want, and I'm going to use simple, something simple here. Joanne, do you want to join us? you know, next weekend, we're having a party and, you know, you know, these people and you haven't seen them in a long time. I usually say, you know, let me, let me be, let me look at my, my schedule. I'm not sure. And yeah, it sounds like fun. But what I do is I really tap into myself. And my body and my truth gives me an answer. I either feel opened and excited, and the soul is enlivened, or I feel contracted. It's like, oh, it's very clear. I really want to be with them. But the truth is the energy is going to be too much for me. And I choose consciously for my well-being my selflessness, because the true self is no self. <laughs> if we're, if you're, 
understand that. But it's caring and bringing in complete and unconditional love and self-acceptance to yourself to choose the sacred no, to be with people that you have known for a long time and love because it's truly for your well-being and not choosing unconsciously going there because I'm supposed to, I need to, I have to, what are they going to think of me if I don't, you know, what are they going to judge me if I don't go? That is a choice that doesn't probably serve you and isn't feeding the love aspect of yourself, the self-love aspect. And also what just came to mind as I'm describing this, the inner child came in, that in this practice, without you realizing it or not, many of our stuff is from our childhood, you know, that it is also healing that wounded aspect we all have the wounded child but it's also feeding that part of you and healing it and when you do that you become more resilient in this lifetime so i i believe that touched your question kathy about how we can also use this the sacred pause in making conscious choices from self love, which feeds out to humanity. It's like, Oh, how can I'm helping humanity? Oh yes, you are. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Um, I want to ask, um, I, I was working with one of my clients uh, a couple days ago and she had a um, operation and she was, um, it was in, it was an in office operation. So it wasn't a bit, it wasn't in a hospital. Hospital, yeah. And, um, and she said she was lying on her stomach and all of a sudden light language started coming out. Yes. And she, said she muffled it <laughs> because she was, she was totally shocked, just like when you started. Yes. You're, you're in the middle of stuff and all of a sudden, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I, I, on, on the line in the grocery store. It's like, rot row, <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> and, well, here it comes, and I have no idea what it means. But um, anyway, um, I thought of you because of hearing your story, and I thought that might be helpful for others because – um, I did talk funny language when I was a kid. I still talk a little funny language to the cats, but I don't talk funny language or um, I, it's light language, but it's it sounds Russian. My my version sounds yeah, Russian it's all... or something. But anyway, um, and I do it with the cats when no one's looking, but I'm totally under control. Well, <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, right. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I understand. Can, I, I can hide my that weirdness, not the other, but that. So could you um, share a little bit about light language? Because I think a lot of people are going to be activated in this time period as they do their work. Their origin um, may be from another star system where this is, um, where, where it's not totally telepathic, where the sound actually has, um, cause I think it's sound and resonance. It's communicating, right? Yeah. So yes. Could you talk a little bit about that? So that the people that may be just, um, like my customer that, um, I mean, she said, Oh my God, I didn't know where it came from. It yeah. You need to hook us up, Kathy. <laughs> I will. Trusting she is healing beautifully. Yes. But yes. Okay. Well, anyway, so I just thought that would be very helpful because I have a funny feeling that this is a part of this phase yeah. of um, clearing up and cleaning up and um, being back into uh, resonance with who you really are yeah. is yeah. going to cause a lot of people to have that superpower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, first blessings to your friend and <clears throat> um, yeah, my sense is it was not a mistake as I tap into her, you know, energy and, uh, and welcome aboard, <laughs> you know, welcome aboard for your friend. You know, for, I, I, I worked with someone yesterday and, and this kind of falls into your question too. She, um, she spoke low, light language and didn't, again, didn't know what it was, didn't have a label. And she goes, I was just coming out with this and it was years ago. And she kept saying to herself, I can't do this. No, this is like, I, I'm crazy. And cause I get that too. I thought I was a crazy person and she, um, she forgot about it. She put it in the closet, locked it up and that's it. Well, lately it's not stopping. <laughs> it just continues to come through her and someone, you know, re referred her to me and, um, and, and her light language is, is beautiful. There's definitely a high resonant quality in it. Um, and, and there, it's very purposeful, but for me, it, I start, I think it started coming through the years kind of go by, but it, it was before 2012. I want to say 2011 ish, 20, late 2010, something like that. I had no idea what was going on. I knew I was going through an awakening process. I definitely thought I was a crazy person. <laughs> and for me, the, the frequency was so refined that it affected my body. I, it, like it came through whenever it wanted. Yes, I was in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I was out having dinner, two o'clock in the morning, company over. And I knew it was coming through because I sat there and I used to go, uh-oh. <laughs> and boom, it started coming through. And I, it, it had me. I was, you know, I didn't know. And it affected my body where after it finished, you know, the, you know, the, uh, you know, the expression ended, I was exhausted. I couldn't move my body. I drooled. I mean, it really did a job on my form. And I found someone who was familiar with light language because I was like, I can't be alone. Somebody else has to be doing this too. And I need somebody to help me. And so, um, <clears throat> so I did work with someone and she said something to me that I was like, you're kidding. She said, Joanne, you're in charge of your body. And I was like, what? And she said, you can be in control to speak with, which I didn't know what I was speaking to, what it was, that not now. It's not appropriate. I'll let you know when, you know, kind of thing. And it really allowed me to be empowered. I was like, cool. I mean, I don't, I could be out to dinner and feel it and go, mm -mm, no, not now, <laughs> you know, not now. But of course, through the years th that has shifted a lot, you know, because when I introduced it in my private practice with, with clients, with souls, and I started doing group um, session, you know, Shemaya, I call them Shemaya gatherings. Um, <clears throat> I, and early on, I had to take, a, you know, just rest for an hour to recoup my energy. That's how much it, it depleted me. Now, again, through the years, it's been long. It's like, it's a dance. So it, it's a dance. It, it is me and not me and, you know, me, not my, my true self. And I feel there's a truth in what you're saying, Kathy, um, because I have experienced this as well through people that I'm working with or being in touch with that it's happening spontaneously or they're remembering that they used to speak this when they were a teenager and now they're 50 years old. And so how you use it, why it's here, I feel it's different for everyone. You know, Shemai is here. I feel specifically to open people's hearts, to raise the, 
the consciousness to unity consciousness throughout humanity. And it has, it has a quality of grace, you know, and, and, and love. I mean, I, there's a real purity to it, but it could just be there for your own, you know, your own awakening. So it's trusting it, allowing, be in touch with me, you know, um, I'm here, <laughs> I'm here to help, support, guide. Um, so, you know, so it, it is, I feel like a remembering and, and there's other things that I wanted to share. It's an, it's a native language inherent within the cells of the human biology. I love this. That's why I'm reading it. It is the consciousness that makes up our higher mental mat matrices. I didn't say that right. Matrix. This is the language of our soul that communicates on all levels our, of our spiritual bodies. And it's naturally communicates with the consciousness language that is interdimensional. So Kathy, you mentioned other, other dimensions. Is it Palladian? Is it Arcturian? It, you know, I, I don't have a label of what, the light language that's trans, you know, that's transmuted through me, Shamaya, I actually have through the years, it's our original voice. It's the voice of God. It's the voice of source energy. I don't know where it comes from. And it comes from it. It's, uni it's a universal language, living knowledge. And again, it's not our intellectual knowledge. It's, and it's an, an innate aspect of ourselves. So, Well, I love that Shemai wanted to come and play today. And I want everyone also to, to notice that over the years, um, Joanne knows what Shemai is saying. She can actually translate. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people that do light language, you just go, oh, that felt good. Wonder what it meant. Yeah. Um, but uh, Joanne is able to um, get a transmission for her clients and, and help you with um, your next step to, um, to awakening to the beauty of your existence here. Yeah. This yeah. isn't a this is a gift that is just keeps keeps being unwrapped. It yeah, it it it's it, I see it as you know like this warp wave. <laughs> it just keeps like wow. And I'm the kid in the candy store. I, I have to tell you, you know, on the bottom, it's like what I am, you know, and to me, that's, those are labels and I, I'm still the kid in the candy store with this. And I just want to, if we have a few more minutes, if sure. that's okay, sure. that I, I feel there's a level of significance here. And Kathy, you mentioned experience, you know, like you, you receive the transmission from Shemaya, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it's an experience. But what I, what I invite here is to allow the transmission. And again, you could do this through the sacred pause. Like you're you're consciously inviting this transmission to permeate your cells. When you invite the transmission to permeate your cells, the cells begin to vibrate in that higher love frequency and it becomes embodied. It's more than just an experience. To me, there's a difference there. Experience is one thing. The embodiment of the experience sort of locks it in. <laughs> into the frequency of your presence, of your form. And you rest in that. 
you rest in, and the image I'm seeing is sort of the sacred lotus, resting in the stillness, which we didn't even touch on today, but the sacred pause brings that stillness in, resting in that state of grace, which allows the spaciousness to connect with divinity and embody that divinity in the world and not of the world, you know? And the, the translation has, you know, again, evolved over the years. It's not a hundred percent, but I do have a sense of, is it a prayer that's being extended to you? Is it a conversation that Shemaya is extending? Is it for a specific part of the body, like the throat chakra is if it's, you know, tight and you have a problem expressing that the transmission will specifically for that chakra. So you can, you know, express your own gifts and your, you know, your truth in it. So yes, I would love to support humanity. Yes. And you are. And I, I just want to thank you again. We, We'll have to do this again um, and and talk about other things because there's so much we could do. But what Joanne offers is a way for your, your consciousness to remember who it really is on all sorts of levels. It may start as a um, need for help with a relationship or your job or your 3D life or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It ends up being so much more and so deep. Um, I hope you've gotten that feeling from our conversation today about the possibility to go deep, fast, clean, without any um, agenda to, towards who you really are and the gift, unwrap the gift of who you really are. So it's thank beautiful. you, Joanne, so much. And thank I'm you, blessed. And uh, we'll do this again, okay? I'm blessed. Much love. Much love oh, to everyone. And, and everyone, um, I did put in the chat and everything, um, joannepalladino.com is how we get a hold of Joanne. She is on Facebook, but, but you really want to go to her website and you'll see lots of other things that will help you understand this journey that um, if you choose you will be so thrilled with the outcome. Um, I bless you so much and thank you so much. Yeah, love and blessings, everyone. Be well. Okay. Okay. Be well. Bye-bye, bye. everyone. Thank you for being here. And Sanaya's here and Marita's here. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, whoever's there.